Good morning. It's Thursday morning here on the ABC 10 Information Network. I'm Daniela Pardo. The time now is 430. Let's go right outside to the Bonnie backyard with Michelle Apon. Good morning, Michelle. Daniela, let me tell you right now, I'm outside in the Bonnie backyard and temperatures are cold and we have a breeze, so it's making the temperature feel a little bit chillier. So if you are stepping out right now, grab a jacket, be prepared for a cold start to the morning. Here's what it looks like looking from our camera, looking downtown. You can see the flag whipping around in the wind and you can see our camera shaking as well. So it is on the breezy side. We have winds right now ranging from 5 to 15 miles per hour across the valley and the delta across the foothills, light winds and lighter winds across the Sierra. But look at these temperatures, widespread middle to upper 30s across the valley and the foothills. So again, when you factor in the winds, it's going to feel much colder. Truckee, 7 degrees, South Lake Tahoe, 14 degrees right now. And as we plan out your day, it looks like we are going to be staying with some upper 30s over the next four hours. By 1030, plan on middle 40s into the lunch hour. Temperatures will slowly warm up into the low 50s. Now we're looking at high temperatures to slowly warm into the middle 50s. That's slightly above average for this time of year. But again, if you are stepping outside, be prepared for a morning chill. Over to you. Thank you, Michelle. Definitely felt the chillier temperature this morning. All right, now to some breaking news from Melbourne, Australia, where an SUV plowed into a crowd outside a busy train station. More than a dozen people were injured, some even critically. Police are now calling this a deliberate act, but not an act of terror. ABC's Arlette Science has more from Washington. Pedestrians on a crowded street in the center of Melbourne mowed down. At this stage, we believe it is a deliberate act. However, we do not know the motivation. Just after 4.30 p.m. local time, a vehicle plowed through a crowd on Flinders Street right outside a bustling rail station. I heard a, just the, the impact I actually heard inside my office, then next thing I heard screaming. On the side of the road, a white SUV can be seen with its hood smashed in. Victoria police say the driver was arrested by an off-duty police officer. He is a 32-year-old Australian citizen of Afghan descent. He is a person who is known to Victoria Police and has a history of drug use as well as mental health issues. Police arrested a second man, a 24-year-old filming the incident nearby with a mobile phone who possessed a bag of knives. Authorities are assessing if he was connected to the crash. We don't at this time have any evidence or any intelligence to indicate there's a connection with terrorism. Emergency teams descended on the scene to tend to the wounded. More than a dozen people injured and several in critical condition. Some taken away on stretchers to a local hospital. This is a terrible, evil, cowardly act and one that I'm sure will be condemned by all Victorians. A similar incident occurred in Melbourne in January and six people were killed. Authorities installed concrete blocks in various places around the city to prevent similar incidents from occurring. But it doesn't seem that made a difference here. Arlette Signs, ABC News, Washington. Well, as you may know, the Republican tax plan will soon be law. We are making America great again. You haven't heard that, have you? The corporate tax rate will be slashed permanently from more than 35 to 21 percent. Tax cuts for individuals expire after eight years, but Americans will see their standard deduction and the child tax credit doubled. A new study shows Americans making $75,000 or less will face a tax hike in a decade. Wealthy Americans will continue to see their tax cut, and the, sh the change shouldn't affect your 2017 tax return that you file in April. AT&T, Comcast, and Wells Fargo say they'll be giving bonuses to their employees once a tax cut bill is signed into law. AT&T says more than 200,000 of its non-management workers will be getting a $1,000 bonus. Comcast will be giving $1,000 bonuses to over 100,000 employees, and Wells Fargo says they will boost their minimum wage to $15 an hour. Republicans celebrated passing their tax plan at the White House yesterday, but now a new deadline. Government funding is set to expire at midnight tomorrow, and Republican lawmakers are still hammering out a plan to avoid a government shutdown. Before covering the Australia story, ABC's Arlotte Sainz broke it down for us from Washington. Congress is barreling towards a government shutdown with no consensus on how to avoid it. House GOP leaders have presented a tentative plan to keep the government funded through January 19th. 
Their approach provides a four-week extension for programs like flood insurance, FISA surveillance, and the Children's Health Insurance Program, which pays for health care for 9 million children. And we'll do something once again before the end of the year to make sure that those states don't get hit with, with any chip cuts. It also calls for a standalone vote on an $81 billion disaster relief package. But it's not a done deal. GOP leaders still have to sell the plan to their rank and file, and it's unclear how Republican leaders in the Senate will react. Congress also appears ready to punt until the new year on thorny issues like health care and protections for the so-called dreamers. Democrats are anxious for Republicans to show their cards. We're trying to get as good a deal as possible, but the bottom line is we haven't even seen anything. The shutdown scramble comes after Republicans took a tax victory lap, complete with a presidential fist pump. It's always a lot of fun when you win. Glowing Republican lawmakers praised the president for their first major legislative win. You listen to voices no one else was listening to. You're one heck of a leader, and we're all benefiting from it. House Republican leadership hasn't indicated when they might hold votes on a spending plan, but lawmakers are eager to avoid a shutdown before the holidays. Arlette Signs, ABC News, Washington. Murder, armed robbery, drug dealing, and gun trafficking. 29 suspects who committed those crimes are now off the streets thanks to some serious teamwork. Sacramento Police, Deputy Sheriffs, ATF, and the District Attorney's Office put their forces together after a shooting left five people hurt and one dead. Officers say the incident in Meadowview Park sparked an investigation that got 211 guns and the bad guys off the streets, but they still have some work to do. It's not something that you start and then stop. It's something that you continue doing. So whether it's prevention, intervention, that is all times. Our officers that, you know, many of which you see in the back of the room are not not working tomorrow. They'll be working tomorrow. SAC Police Chief Daniel Hahn says this is just the first phase of their crackdown and that there will be more investigations and arrests to come. If you travel the interstate near downtown Stockton, you may have noticed a green metal fence going up. As ABC 10's Kurt Rivera reports, the fencing is designed to protect one thing and chase out all the others. Under a freeway overpass in downtown Stockton, Jesus X, as he calls himself, trying to make a buck selling clothes. He's going to sell blankets, $5. I got some hoodies, $5. Homeless five years, the former tech worker from Oakland, not happy about a new fence installed by Caltrans, soon to surround what he calls home. Uh, over there, over there. And Mary, not happy either. Homeless with her dog Chiquita by way of Mexico. She's not sure where she'll move next. Over 7,000 feet of fencing is going up at two separate but nearby locations in Stockton. The cost? $1.3 million. As one of the responsibilities of Caltrans is to always protect and maintain the state's right of way and its property. And at some of these locations, there's been, you know, damage, uh, trash removal. Caltrans says it cost $160,000 last year to clean up after the homeless, taking 3,000 man hours of work in San Joaquin County to do it. So fencing is going up under and around the Highway 4 Crosstown Freeway and along nearby Mormon Slough. We've seen some, you know, fires from barbecues and cooking that's happening at these camps that have started brush fires along the highways. So will the fences keep the homeless out? Not so, says Todd LaCour, a homeless and unemployed welder more than 10 years from Salt Lake City. It's not going to stop them. You know, all they're going to do is tear them up, you know, sell, sell it for scrap metal and go inside. Caltrans expects the work to be completed by next spring. The homeless can expect to simply move elsewhere. In downtown Stockton, Kurt Rivera, ABC 10 News. The latest installment of the Star Wars franchise delivered here in the States, and now it's heading east for yet another premiere.
Star Wars The Last Jedi is dominating at the box office here in the U.S. and it's getting ready to open in another major market, movie market worldwide. ABC's Jason Nathanson, Nathanson has that and more in today's show this wrap. Star Wars The Last Jedi expanded its global reach, holding its world premiere last night in China. And at a news conference, director Ryan Johnson talked about equality, revealing the lengths to which he went to make sure things were even. It's the first time we did 50-50% ah. with male and female, yeah. both in the resistance and in the first order. All the yeah. background actors are half and half male and female. Yeah. Star Wars The Last Jedi won't open in China for another two weeks. Kristen Wiig gets small and downsizing the new Alexander Payne movie that opens tonight. In the film, she's married to Matt Damon, and the two of them decide if they want to join a new movement that shrinks people to five inches tall to save money and the environment. The premise is pretty out there, and next she tells us she'd like to do something really rooted in reality. I would love to do some sort of like either biopic character piece where I get to just really become, you know, like a different person. I would love to do something like that. That's what Allison Janney gets to do in I, Tanya, the Tanya Harding biopic currently rolling out in theaters across the country. Janney plays Harding's heart as a rock mom, and she hopes by the end you think a little differently about the Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan drama. The abuse that she came from, it makes you have a lot more appreciation, understanding of what, who, who she was, and you have a lot more empathy for her. There's a lot of Oscar buzz for Janney and for Margot Robbie, who stars in the title role. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Michelle Apon joins us now. Michelle, today felt like 20 degrees colder. I may be exaggerating, but you're saying <laughs> it wasn't just me who felt like it was a little chillier. It is very cold this morning. So temperatures right now are into the upper 30s, but we have some winds blowing in from the northwest. We're getting that colder air to move in, and it feels much chillier because of it. So dress warm first thing this morning, but at least we have some sunshine later today and it's going to slowly warm up into the middle 50s. Now I want to show you some really great photos that we got yesterday of some snow. Check it out. You can see Dwayne Hart got some snow. Stu, thank you so much for this picture. We also got a little bit of a dusting of snow in Tuolumne. And if you want to share your weather force pictures with us, all you have to do is send us an email with that photo, weatherforce at abc10.com or use the hashtag WXForce10 on Instagram or on Twitter. That's how I get those photos. Okay, let's talk about how much snow some of the ski resorts got yesterday. Squaw Valley, four to six. The Soda Springs area got four inches. Sugar Bowl, two inches. Same for Sierra Tahoe. Kirkwood, one inch of snow. So we definitely need a lot more and we need a lot of rain across the valley, but we'll definitely take it. We have the potential for a few showers coming up next week. and We'll talk more about that in just a second, but let's talk about today. You can see the camera shaking just a little bit. It's upper 30s right now, but with the winds, it's going to feel much chillier. So please dress warm this morning. Get those kids dressed in those layers because it's going to be a cold start. For today, temperatures are going to stay into the upper 30s for 630 into 830. And then by 1030, we'll slowly warm up into the middle 40s. Into the early afternoon, temperatures will slowly rise into the middle 50s once again. So really no change temperature wise from yesterday but we'll still get that breeze here and there from the northwest up to about 15 miles per hour. Currently, high pressure is still in control, and it looks like it's going to stay this way for the next several days. But let me take you into Monday, which is Christmas Day. We'll have cloud cover, and we have the potential for a few showers to line up, maybe even into the day after Christmas for the southern Sierra. We could even see a few isolated valley showers. So as of right now, it looks like the valley will stay dry, Christmas Day and the day after Christmas. But if you are traveling to, say, Yosemite or the Southern Sierra, you do have the potential for a few isolated showers. Winds right now up to about 15 miles per hour across the valley and in the delta, lighter across the foothills and at Sierra. But look at these temperatures. This is the big story this morning is the cool temperatures right now from the middle to upper 30s widespread for the valley and in the foothills, much colder in the Sierra. Nine degrees right now in Truckee, South Lake Tahoe, 14 degrees across Fairfield, 45. The Bay Area starting off a little bit warmer with them with some upper 40s. Now, Truckee and South Lake Tahoe will slowly warm up into the middle 30s across the foothills, 40s and 50s later today. And as we look over the next several days, it starts to warm up across Tahoe into the middle 40s, maybe even some low 50s, maybe by tomorrow for that area. Across the Bay Area, 50s and 60s. We're looking at upper 50s across San Joaquin Valley. Same for the Sacramento Valley. And in the 10 day, we have that slight shower chance potentially next week. But all in all, it looks like most of the 10 day will be on the drier side with middle to upper 50s. Daniela, over Thank to you. Thank you, Michelle. I'm going to take your word and not wash my car till after Christmas. Yes. <laughs> Just 
just to be safe. All right, well, a Roseville police officer caught a suspected car burglar, and this officer went above and beyond to make sure the victim and several others were able to get their valuables back in time for Christmas. ABC 10's Francis Wang shares this story and the lesson we can all learn from this. When Roseville police officer Richard Ron served an arrest warrant earlier this week, he found much more than just the suspect. We discovered items uh, that were believed to be related to identity theft, mail theft, and vehicle theft. The stolen property belonged to at least 10 different victims. One of them was this man from Arizona. One victim in particular, he was staying here at the Homewood Suites. He was a federal employee helping with hurricane relief. His briefcase had been stolen from his car. Not only was the briefcase a treasured gift of 30 years, inside were important documents. And that's why he had that, his passport, uh, social security cards, uh, uh, driver's license, all those things were important to him because that basically contained his life. Roseville police posted about this on Facebook. Many of the comments applauding the department. One comment that stood out to me, Officer Ron went above and beyond for me a few years ago. When someone broke into my car in broad daylight, he staked out the parking lot and caught the guys. I think it's uh, an example of what any good officer would do, try to be relentless and uh, really solve crimes. And after our interview, that's exactly what Officer Ron and his partner went back to doing. To prevent theft and uh, any other type of crime that might come um, from people being here uh, during the holidays. And of course, we're happy that this story has a happy ending, but just a reminder from police not to leave valuables in your car, especially during the holiday season. In Roseville, Francis Wang, ABC 10 News. Well, exactly three months ago, Hurricane Maria devastated Puerto Rico. It became the worst power catastrophe in U.S. history. Over a quarter million Puerto Ricans left the island, and still today, millions remain without power. So this month, ABC 10's Lilia Luciano went back to her homeland to bring us her perspective. She spoke to the San Juan mayor, who calls out President Trump for being what she calls the slow and inefficient federal response. Join us right here on ABC 10 on New Year's Day. Starting at 6 p.m., we'll be airing a half-hour special, Puerto Rico Rises. Well, it turns out the rumors are true. Apple makes an admission that users have long sus suspected, but we explain why. Today, I cut your costs on haircuts, a last-minute gift, beauty bargains like you won't believe, and it's all coming right up. Hi, country. Can you hear me? Don't forget to wash your hands after using the restroom. After going to the bathroom. Back to you. Do they need to do a mic check, DJ, TJ? Yes. Now? Testing, testing. You got it. You got it. Oh. Do they need to frame me up?
Okay. The most technologically advanced newsroom requires the fastest and most reliable network. The ABC 10 Information Network. Connected to you. Powered by Xfinity. Today's Tech Bytes, Apple admits to slowing down older iPhones. So Apple says it slows down the processors on older iPhones to prevent battery issues that could cause the phones to suddenly shut down or restart. The tech giant claims it's not a ploy to get you to replace your phone. So it often does that too. Exactly. It appears Amazon could be rolling out a rival to YouTube. The company recently filed to get trademarks for two names, Amazon Tube and OpenTube. The filing came days after YouTube's parent company, Google, pulled YouTube from Amazon devices. And Jiffy is out with the most used GIFs of the year. At number three, the waving pug with 215 <laughs> million views. And then the blinking guy. Yeah, of course, second most viewed GIF. And the most viewed one was the love gnome. That was viewed 350 million times this year. Those are your Tech Bites. In ABC 10 business headlines this morning, you know that tax bill Republicans just passed? Well, it turns out a number of companies plan to give some of their windfall to employees once it's signed into law. Wells Fargo says it's intended to raise the minimum wage for its workers to $15 an hour. It will also donate $400 million to charity and kick in $100 million over the next few years to support small businesses. Other companies are also planning similar measures. Another case of people getting sick at a Chipotle restaurant, this time in Los Angeles. The LA County Department of Public Health says a number of workers at the burrito chain came down with nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. No word what caused their symptoms. The restaurant was inspected and remains open for business. AAA says a record-breaking 107 million Americans are expected to take the roads, rails, and skies this holiday season, a 3.1% increase from last year. 2017 marks the ninth consecutive re year of uh, rising and holiday travel. The best time to get a move on, early mornings or after the rush hours commute. And if your schedule permits, traveling on the holiday isn't a bad option. It's not. I've done it and I'm going to do it again this year. All right, well, are you one of those people checking Facebook at work? and chit-chatting, let's be honest, we've all been there. Turns out that downtime is taking a bite out of employers' bottom line. A new study by the Journal of Applied Psychology says workers idling is costing more than $100 billion a year. The study adds the problem spans all industries and doesn't discriminate against race, gender, age, or education. Today we help beautify our world on a budget. Our deal guy Matt Granite shows us two last-minute Christmas bargains. I am fired up for today's frugality. Great to be with you with so many people searching for last minute gifts. Not only can you take back control over haircuts with a personal care grooming unit, but one of my favorite beauty bargains was just put to the test by our favorite mom tester. I love using this brush to straighten my hair. I usually have to go to the salon to get it done. My husband's driving me crazy with those high salon bills. With this, I can do it right at home, my own straightener. I brush my hair, it's quick, it's easy, it doesn't burn my hair. I can use it every single day and my hair turns out great. This hair straightener, one of the most in-demand beauty bargains you can find on Amazon and at under 40 bucks, a personal grooming kit complete with all of the accessories. From a design trimmer, nose trimmer, shaver, full-size trimmer, guide comb, and body trimmer. Oh, you can bet I put this to the test. Oh, this feels great. This feels so precise. Cody, you're doing a great job. Super precise at its lowest recorded price will arrive in time for Christmas. This item, which is not a paid product, on our website, abc10.com, is where I have you covered your biggest bargains in Northern California. Back to you. All right, Matt Granite. Coming up on ABC 10 Morning Blend, the MLS welcomes their latest new franchise, but someone connected to the whole situation dropped a little hint that there's good news coming to our capital city. So we'll wait and see what happens today. And usually an explosion in Hollywood is some sort of effect for a film, but this one shook residents of Tinseltown and their homes. 
And it's not the major snowstorm we want for the mountains and resorts in this end of the state, but one mountain range caught a nice pile of fresh powder from yesterday's storm. Check that out just in time for the first day of winter, right? Oh, how exciting. Yep. Thank you, Megan. I'll yeah. see you on Morning Blend. Okay. Okay, well, Your check this out. Disney's selected. Freeform Channel announced a tiny house contest earlier this month on Good Morning America. This family, who lost their home in the October wildfires, entered the contest never thinking they would win. But now, they're soon headed to a place that will be more secure and safe and comfortable than they were staying. The family is from Sebastopol. They've been living in a friend's RV, and they're expecting to get their tiny home next month. They say this is a Christmas wish come true. So well deserved for this family.